everyone! Welcome back to Schwab. Things are great. Yeah. Nothing's happened since the last one. They nothing improved to note. everything. Yeah. Um, it is perfect. We have nothing to talk about. The end. <laughs> yeah. So um, the show hasn't been uh, back since the uh, the coronavirus stuff has all been going on. Uh, we did have a poll set up on Patreon. That's still happening with uh, Charmed Rewind. Uh, it's just uh, delayed a little bit because uh, the show came back from hiatus. The show came back the very next month or so, yeah. whenever it was. <laughs> uh, we uh, we took a look at uh, Season 2, Episode 15, Third Time's the Charm. <gasps> uh, a lot of stuff happened. I did, real quick, want to give a shout out uh, again to uh, Nobody700 on Twitter, uh, who commissioned uh, their friend Dracoholic to uh, draw the Charmed Ones facing the Cancellation Demon, <laughs> which is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to link to that on, uh, on Twitter. So we finally got back from break. I don't know how many episodes... They have filmed currently, um, because this is another one of the shows, so well, everything's on break right now, um, uh, ever since the coronavirus stuff, so I don't know how long this is going to be airing new episodes before either the season ends early or we have a very long hiatus. Yeah. But thank God uh, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a real treat. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. <laughs> um, you know what is an episode where the sisters stayed in the same plot as each other for the most part. You know what? Yeah, I'll give them that. <laughs> they were <laughs> they were in the plot together. Uh, I do think this was a little better than some of the stuff they've been doing. Um, it was still very uneven. Yeah, it got very messy, but it was better, and uh, I, I liked it until like I don't know near. I liked some of the stuff, I should say, until near the wrap-up. I thought it got really messy <laughs> towards the end. Yeah, I do have some positives, I guess, which is um, which is saying something for this current season, so... <laughs> yes. What are you doing? She's doing some crazy experiment. Please, somebody wake me up from this nightmare! All right, so, um, so let's dive right in. Um... It opens with the sisters uh, drinking some coffee uh, so they can wake up along with the audience uh, out of their long hibernation. Um, <laughs> Maggie is depressed about something that Abigail said uh, in the last episode about uh, maybe the problem with the power of three is them. Uh, they're the issue. Um, but uh, Maggie and Macy are kind of like, well, I mean, we already have cool powers, so... Why do we even need to restore the power of three? Why don't we just have cool power? Like, why risk anything? <laughs> let's just let's just uh, stick with what we got. They go to the bunker. Harry is trying to figure out how to get his dark lighter out of the bottle, baby. Gotta rub him the right way, honey. <laughs> it's so good that it takes a second for you to remember, like, why is the dark lighter in a bottle and stuff? Because... <laughs> Because I was so slapdash done in the previous episode. Like, Need to go get Dark Lighter Harry. Oh, he's in a bottle again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, clearly we've had like a few hiatuses and it's hard to kind of keep track of everything. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, when uh, when the girls show up, uh, Macy's like, you can't get Dark Lighter Harry out of there. Uh, that's too risky. No risks. No risks. <laughs> don't take risks. They're fearful. There's a pattern here. Mm -hmm. If they save innocence, they won't be able to save innocence. <laughs> right then, uh, the girls get a call on Dora's magic map and head out to Portland. Uh, and we're very confused because the girls have a plot together. Yeah. They go out together. Once they get there, um, I'm glad that they explain this to us because nobody would fucking remember this. They they spot Bruce, the guy from the zombie rave, as they explain to us. Yeah. Hey, isn't that Bruce, the guy from the zombie rave? Oh, yeah. You know him, audience. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm a good old uh, Bruce. <laughs> Banner? <laughs> uh, yeah, we shouldn't get too attached to Bruce here. <laughs> we wouldn't like him when he's dead. Or maybe we would. <laughs> That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. They confront him about 
something. I guess they know that he's kidnapped a witch. I don't know if the map is always about witches that are kidnapped or something. They seem to know automatically he's kidnapped someone. I think that's usually what it's beeping about. Because that's kind of what the underworld or whoever's doing all this stuff tends to be doing right now, is just kidnapping witches. Apparently. Well, there's probably a lot of that going on that they're missing while they're just, like, sitting around talking about crap and safe, play, safe place and Jordan and what he's doing. <laughs> All we know is that no matter how many people they go to save, um, they're not going to save them. No. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, they're dead. Yeah. Um, they confront him and he pulls out a gun. Mm-hmm. Um, and wouldn't it be hilarious if he shot them and they'd be like, oh, we don't have any weapon magic against this. <laughs> Just a gun. Uh, Mel melts it. A uh, Mel Melt. And uh, Macy has some awesome uh, fuzzy earmuffs on. Mm. That was pretty cool. <laughs> they want to know where the woman he kidnapped is. Uh, he opens up a shed and a Nosferatu comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Feratu. That was his real name. Like his actual vampire name? No, no, no. His vampire name was Balak Alistain. Why the f*** would he name himself after a famous vampire movie? Was he doing a bit? It's sort of a monster mash. The monsters they've been creating with them. Um... Stealing all of the the powers and abilities from other monsters. Yeah, which was um, new style Jason Voorhees. Yeah, yeah, he was played by uh, Derek Mears, who's an actor and stuntman who like he's in like a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he's he played Jason Voorhees in the Friday the Thirteenth remake. <laughs> the unmemorable um, remake. <laughs> yeah, I believe he was uh, the guy in. Uh, in the Wild Wild West movie where who <laughs> has the plate in his head. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that Will Smith fights. <laughs> yeah, so uh, apparently they gather from this that they have an army of monsters that have abilities like this now. Um, it kind of seemed like an anticlimax. Like, they had, like, this whole build-up finding these, like, you know, the ghoulie in the tub and all that stuff. And then they're like, oh, yeah, there's probably an army of these monsters. Mm -hmm. Meh. Kind of comes off as, like, a one-episode me <laughs> it's weird that bruce banner is like he's trying to get magic and he has this magic creature but then when they use magic on him he's like how did you do that <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> he didn't seem to you know for a monster that's like a mashup of all the other like you know a Frankenstein together from other abilities. He just sort of had like some acid spit and some nails and eyes and like not much else. Yeah. Didn't really look like the super creature because they didn't want to do that much prosthetics or anything. <laughs> it feel it feels like the uh the monster they fought in the uh, the last episode. It was like a smoke monster it was more of a deal than this. Yeah. I mean this yeah, this creature in the end is really weak. <laughs> <laughs> um they do have some trouble getting rid of him but it doesn't really feel yeah it, it, that much more epic than any other kind of like here's a problem we can't solve because we have 45 minutes to fill <laughs> yeah you know, it does like the acid spit like you said and melts old brucey boy and it, it's... He, he it kills him and he falls into something which in turn explodes <laughs> yeah i guess but it's all like when you see him <laughs> melt i guess it kind of like makes him poof away in a fiery thing like he was a demon or something even though this was just supposed to be a normal human <laughs> yeah well it's very yeah, weird that make a lot of sense yeah we should have yeah. like seen like a melty effect where you see a skeleton briefly or something if it was supposed to be melting him <laughs> yeah you know what it reminded me of with him just falling into that thing and exploding? Like, um, <laughs> the scenes, uh, in the birds where they're like at the gas station mm -hmm. and the birds are setting off all these explosions. Yeah. <laughs> or in the birds too, when similar things happen more nonsensically. <laughs> or in the superior bird dynamic. Where the birds just explode. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty funny when they kill off Bruce, like, his boots are left behind, like a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah everything of him is just instant you know, vapor, except his boots. <laughs> and Maggie tosses them in a garbage can and goes, rest in peace, asshat. <laughs> yeah. When they have a brief thing, like, oh, was this worse because it was a human? Like, no, I don't think so. 
It's funny they even bring that up yeah. because the old Charmed didn't bring that up very often, if at all. It, it probably came up once or twice, but the fact that like it was just people that they were killing should have like been a thought. <laughs> yeah, and that was at least thought out loud. Like, I don't know. I mean, we kill demons too if they're evil, so <laughs> why not evil humans? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least they're like, well, I mean, if we have to kill them because they're evil, yeah. then, you know, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Though, I mean, they didn't directly kill him. So. <laughs> yeah, see, their hands are clean. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, you were saved. <laughs> <laughs> they find a woman in the trunk of his car. They see that some backup is, is showing up for him, so they uh, they take her to the bunker. The bunker, it's like AI system or whatever, welcomes her. Like, welcome, Sister Celeste. Yeah. <laughs> or Elder, Elder Celeste is what they yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. And so she's, uh, she's an elder, uh, which they thought w we're all dead. But they're like, shit, what are we going to do with the story now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't have the girls step up as the new elders, so I guess, I don't know. This lady retired. That's why she was okay. Yeah. <laughs> she got sick of the elder game and took off to some beach house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, like, all the the things killing the elders, whatever the fuck happened last season, they're like, oh, she's retired, it's fine, we don't have to kill her. <laughs> she seems to still have, maybe, she seems to still have the abilities of an elder, mm -hmm. so I don't know why they wouldn't find her. Yeah. I was gonna say, maybe she does, she certainly still has witch powers. Yeah, I don't know. She has a watch that uh, she shows them that uh, slows her aging down, which explains why she's lived so long. Um, she said she invented it with Leo! <laughs> uh, Leo Nardo da Vinci, Yeah, <laughs> that is. <laughs> Real bait and switch there. <laughs> yeah, cute nod to the audience there. <laughs> I was just imagining the Voyager Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> yeah, John Reese davies John Reese davies <laughs> Machines that fly through the air, lightning flung from one's hands, mechanical women who live in boxes. Um, she says it doesn't work on humans. Um, I feel like this is setting something up for later in the season, that this watch is going to be important later. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure for what, but they didn't do much with it, so it feels like this is they're setting that up. Chekhov's uh, stopwatch. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Harry has a memory of... Uh, of Elder Celeste being there when he was split in two. Yeah. And he goes, she did this. We replay that scene. We replay the, you know, splitting Harry in two scene. And then, of course, there's a pan over suddenly and she's there. She was she always, always there. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seamless. Why the hell did you do that? She did this. She turned me into an improv student in a black turtleneck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She created uh, white lighters. I'm not sure if they're saying that it was her idea exclusively, but she was certainly there when they were creating them. It seems like they're saying it was her idea to make them in the first place. I guess because she was around during the Salem witch trials and she's like, witches need protection. So we're going to do this. We're going to raise the dead and split them into good and evil versions. And then the good ones will protect the, I don't know. Yeah. This seems overly complicated. Bad ones get stuck in a <laughs> bottle forever. Yeah. Wonderful it's the system. Only way. Yeah. <laughs> Look. That's the only way you're going to get good help <laughs> these days. <laughs> Look, sometimes you got to make the obvious, but uh, but terrible decisions. Yeah, rip some souls in half. You know how it goes. <laughs> Didn't they have a plot? No, they did have a plot. I know for sure they had a plot in Supernatural where they were keeping souls in bottles <laughs> mm -hmm. during the seasons we were still watching. Yeah, shit. Sounds uh, right. yeah, something about stealing souls. The Soul Taker. Harry's pretty pissed about this. Uh, he calls her my own personal Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> Macy's like, well, she's an asset. We need to keep her around. And Harry's not into keeping uh, evil people around as assets unless it's Abigail. <laughs> yeah. He says he's not accustomed to these feelings, of uh, meaning rage. Rage, rage against the machine. <laughs> This doesn't seem consistent. Yeah. He's not accustomed to feeling rage. Yeah, he seemed pretty ragey at a uh, black er, dark night, Harry. Dark night. Dark night. Yeah, the Wherever dark night. Wherever he is, <laughs> Julian's not around, so someone else has got to take up the mantle. Yeah. 
the pitch black night mm-hmm. the mountain, mountain dew. dew yeah <laughs> yeah gamer harry um, <laughs> This feels like something maybe early Harry, uh, it might have made more sense, but we're both well past the point now of, like, Harry feeling rage. Uh, I don't know if this even consistent, like, the old, the OG Charmed is like, oh, the Charmed ones, or the, uh, pa- um, the White Lighters are pacifists genetically, but here it doesn't seem like that's the case. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when he was human, wasn't he kind of an asshole anyway? Yeah, it seems like when he found stuff out about his human past, he wasn't quite thrilled with it. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Just seems like he's got a lot of anger issues, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Is this the first time they've given the group capturing the monsters a name? They call them the Faction. It's possible they threw threw that around and I missed it before. I don't know. This is like, um... It's like that uh, circle and OG charm or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking of um, on Buffy in season four, they had the, the group, the government group that was capturing and Frankensteining demons together no, into their own super soldiers. With Adam Floppy they had some... Disc. <laughs> yeah, they had some generic name. What was it? Uh... Initiative, the initiative. Yeah. yeah. Really lame generic name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the faction. Well, I mean, it works for what they created with stupid Adam floppy disk. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had Adam floppy disk in this show. I can hold 1.4 megabytes of data. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, Carman has something in common with him. <laughs> He's a floppy disk installed into his dashboard. <laughs> Interesting technology. <laughs> I might just upgrade <laughs> and, uh, my 8-track player to this floppy disk. He has a blood tester also, like Kid and Knight Rider. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, I'll do a blood just... test on you, Charmed Ones. Uh, seems like you're suffering from <laughs> bullshit plotteritis. <laughs> Looks like you got Charmed One day and I. <laughs> <laughs> Back to season one. No. <laughs> hey guys, remember when that was a plot? I miss those plots. <laughs> charmed dna (laughs) so elder celeste um she figures that the faction uh is doing all this because they uh they found out her spell how to transfer magic and must have used a dark lighter i.e dark harry to break the code to get at it in that castle they went to sometime earlier in the season there was something about like a scotland castle or something Mm -hmm. so she's like well all right you could take out these monsters pretty easy uh but you got to use the power three and they're like, nope, don't got it anymore. <laughs> She's like, oh, no problem. I'll just uh, help you get it back. Uh, but Macy's like, nah, we don't need it. Don't want it. Don't want to. Not going to eat our vegetables. Can't make us. Yeah, because <laughs> was it the old dead charmed one said if they get it back, it's going to eventually ruin them as sisters yeah, or Yeah, eventually someone's going to die. It's going to destroy the, the of them eventually. Yeah. Something like that. But look, they got the loophole. I mean... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Macy's already died. Death means nothing in this universe. It's fine. Yeah. But Celeste is proving uh, the age-old adage. Uh, the elders are dicks. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks, but y- you need it, so <laughs> too bad. Um, she starts casting a spell on them uh, without their consent, but Macy and Mel, or Macy stops her, and Mel's like, no means no. <laughs> Yeah, I did like, this is what I liked about this episode, was like that we had an elder in here being antagonistic, because that's the way they should be depicted, because they are dicks. Mm -hmm. This is like, that was one good part of this episode, but then they ruin it by the end. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good that like, I mean, it kind of falls apart by the end, but initially when they're like, no, actually, like, this is our choice, we're not gonna like, let you tell us what to do. And, uh, and she's like, well, you know, this is part of the job description, you have to do it, uh, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, sacrifice, you have to do that, like, you who just gave up and retired, like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, I you know, like just an elder being called out on being hypocritical, because they pretty much always were. <laughs> yeah, well, and it feels like their decision uh, not to do it initially is more justified than the original Charmed Ones, who were just complaining because they wanted to, like, go on dates and shit all the time. Yeah. Like... 
at least this they're like look we're we can take care of ourselves but this means risking like dying like this should be our decision right yeah it's not like they're just saying we all we want to do is sit at home and drink margaritas or whatever <laughs> it's like yeah they still want to help people yeah. they just don't know about restoring the power of three at this point exactly that's how you do a, a plot like that and um you know, that's, uh, I think, a pretty good storyline, you know, fighting your destiny, forging your own kind of uh, path, mm -hmm. which, again, kind of falls apart near the end. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, they were going somewhere. So uh, after uh, after stopping her from casting the spell, or so they think, uh, Macy goes looking for Harry uh, and ends up going uh, back home. Uh, and there's some classical music playing and children giggling ominously. <laughs> yeah, I first noticed, like, a children's toy in the back of the house when she came in. It's like, what the hell's that doing there? And then it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Maggie's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a toy margarita. <laughs> <laughs> toy margarita. <laughs> <laughs> it's a skinny yeah. Marg Rattler. <laughs> Baby's first skinny Marg. <laughs> skinny Marg sippy cup. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those glasses where it's got the liquid in between the two layers of plastic, so it looks like yeah, you're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, one of those that you like you feed to the baby doll and it looks like it's empty, yeah. and then the baby doll like you have to change its diapers, <laughs> like wet some <laughs> Marg P. Yeah. <laughs> And then Galvin bursts in, what magic is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's my true nightmare. Galvin's alive again. <laughs> Whoa. That is wild. <laughs> I was dead. That is wild. Who is this car Galvin, man? Galvin, come Shit. back. What the hell's going on here? Galvin, come back. You were too good for the show. I miss you. <laughs> Galvin. I need you to stay innocent in Jumanji. <laughs> I'll pick you up later. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm trying to take off Knight Rider style installing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is a mix of very many in jokes here. <laughs> Not really, it's just Carman again. <laughs> oh, it's just Carman in Jumanji with Knight Rider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Carman waiting in his car. He'd like to come and meet us, but he's just a fucking car. There's a Carman waiting in his car. Okay, so uh, anyway, the children are giggling, uh, the children come out, and um, Abigail follows, uh, and she's uh, married to Harry, they're uh, married with children. <laughs> oh, pig, oh, flush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's have sex, no pig. <laughs> <laughs> Gorsh, I'll have sex with pig. <laughs> See, now we're going into yeah. injustice. <laughs> Goofy was fucking Pete's wife. We know this to be true. Her name was also Peg there. You're caught up. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Now it all comes full circle. Your dad doesn't just have sex, Maxie. Your dad books. Yeah, so um, that's when uh, Maggie and Mel come out. Uh, Mel's got glasses on. That's how you know something's off. Turns out uh, they're all not that close anymore. Uh, Mel and Maggie are chumming it up with Abigail. Macy got married to Julian, went off, became a scientist, but they all sort of drifted apart. Uh, and they're like, well, Abigail got rid of her demon powers, so we're just going to replace you with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Macy's trying to convince uh, Maggie and Mel that uh, this is uh, part of the spell that Celeste cast on them, but they don't remember that. Um, uh, Macy goes back uh, in with uh, Harry, who is a chef again. He's making scones or something, <laughs> so <laughs> back to his old ways. <laughs> he needs a new way. A new Which way. is the old way. The old way. Macy goes to her room and Abigail is in there in her red dress. <gasps> her seductive red dress. <laughs> I'm glad this dream was Abigail's only appearance in this episode, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this was a great appearance because it was minimal. Mm -hmm. 
and no one was stupid about it. like the, everyone else was like cool about it because it was a dream mm-hmm. but it wasn't because they were just idiots in the real world like eh, we need her as an ally yeah this is just a fake future where they were all idiots <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty great, though. Macy's, like, taking no shit. She's like, no matter the reality, you're always the devil. Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out Abigail didn't strip her powers, so they get into a fight, and she tosses her through a railing and goes, happy anniversary, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. I think her wearing the red dress was a pretty good nod to like, ha ha, I've, t- I've even taken your your sexy red dress. Yeah. The music, the candles, the dress, what's going on? I like there was <laughs> a portrait too of like Harry and Abigail up on the wall in her room. Yeah. <laughs> Macy is just going to like throw down. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, enough of this bitch. Just throws a I'm dagger. I'm going to get rid of you. <laughs> Yeah, she tosses a dagger at her. Uh, Maggie jumps in the way, and Maggie is killed. (laughs) Absolutely wonderful. (laughs) Ding dong, the Wicked Witch is dead. (laughs) She starts leaking margaritas. (laughs) Skinny marks coming out of her. (laughs) Quick, lick it up! (laughs) It's kind of weird after this, because Macy's just like, How do I escape this nightmare? And then it's over. Yeah! (laughs) Get me out of this nightmare! (laughs) What year is it? (laughs) Macy wakes up and they're on to uh, the next nightmare. Um, (laughs) The Bumble twins are like, oh yeah, we asked Celeste to leave. It's cool. She's gone. Uh, Everything's cool. We're in reality for sure. But Maggie has a vision uh, that the Nosferatu is in the building at Safe Space. And Mel condescends her like a real piper. (laughs) Oh, are you sure? (laughs) This is just something that she would do, like, on a normal basis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah, sure you fucking saw the Nosferatu. <laughs> well, I gotta get to baking. I have children, you know. And then Maggie's like, I'm not a baby. And then she goes and has a temper tantrum and runs off crying. Jordan did not make to me. Yeah, Jordan's there, and he's all like, oh, let's build a fort. (laughs) Protect us from the monsters. (laughs) And she goes, like, they offer her some Cheerios. (laughs) That's for babies. (laughs) That's when Maggie sees she's quantum leaped into herself as a baby. (laughs) And Jordan's in a hologram that only she bothers to see. No one else wants to. (laughs) <laughs> I liked Jordan in this episode because every depiction was stupid, so it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see? You see? Your stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah, her, uh, her the mirror with her younger self, I guess, explains why she's in pigtails the whole time. <laughs> yeah, Jordan's condescending her like uh, like someone who stole his first aid kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he he starts walking away, and she's like, Jordan, don't bail on me. Isn't that what we men do? (laughs) (laughs) It seems like that's a little bit mixed up with the whole, like, uh, wanting to be taken seriously angle. A lot of of mix of of things with her theme in particular. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Nosferatu is doing a Freddy Krueger in the hall. Yeah. (laughs) Scraping his nails against the wall. One, two, Jason's coming for you. Oops. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, give me those (laughs) mel shows up and uh she tells uh, maggie she needs to go to her room (laughs) that's when uh nosferatu shows up and kills her yay she went to mel (laughs) he went (laughs) and as she's dying she said kill whitey (laughs) kill whitey the white man did this! And he said, go to Mel where you belong and twist the knife. <laughs> Mel is other people. <laughs> hope it gives you Mel, hope it gives you Mel. <laughs> and then she goes, what the Mel? <laughs> Alright, uh, Macy shows up and blames Maggie for this. What'd you do? <laughs> She's like, oh, it's a baby. Not my fault. <laughs> she sucks her thumb. 
<laughs> she turns into uh into Chris Farley and Tommy Boy when he doesn't want to like admit that he broke the car door off, so he sets it back. <laughs> and then when David Spade opens it, what'd you do? <laughs> Yeah, she has Mel propped back up like she's not dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Rishi, I'm still alive. I'm Mel. I'm angry about something. I'm angry. I'm really gay. I love my girlfriend. <laughs> Whoever she is, I don't even remember her name. <laughs> I own a magic shop, maybe. <laughs> I'll never be seen running it even once. <laughs> Smells like still beer and right privilege. <laughs> Hope that magic guy never comes back, because I got a new girlfriend, and that would be awkward. <laughs> I like this weekend at Mel's scenario. <laughs> I come up with. Nosferatu who just walks by. Whoa, they're messed up. <laughs> I don't think they need what me the? in this. <laughs> he, he walks in and then backs away like Homer in the yeah. bushes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they quickly piece together um, that this is uh, a dream that they are all simultaneously having. Mm -hmm. But they don't see, I guess whenever it goes to the next person, it resets with whoever was in it because like otherwise it, if they don't remember their portion of the dream, it's not really together, but whatever. I guess it just goes from dream to dream. Yeah. In uh, reality, uh, Harry finds Celeste still casting the spell, and the girls are on the floor uh, like they've just had a skinny Marg bender. <laughs> <laughs> um, he threatens her with a knife. Yeah. Uh, she says that she just wants them to face their fears and reconstitute the power of three. But the spell went wrong, and they should be awake at this point. Um, and if they don't, uh, if they don't wake up, um, because apparently they just, they're too much of a team now, they won't leave each other, <laughs> um, even in their dreams. But uh, if all three of them die, uh, then they'll never wake up. They die for real. Yeah, this was insane. So it's like, normally they're supposed to die in their dream and if all three of them die within their own dream it's okay and they wake up that's what she says but if they all die in each other's dreams they die like what a stupid as shit spell <laughs> Like, and like, look, she, she's the same elder that came up with this, the like, how do we protect witches? I don't know, just like get some dead people yeah. and split them in half. <laughs> oh, and their other halves are really crazy, so put them in genie bottles and hope they don't get out, or it's gonna be fucking crazy. And, and, like, she's been around since the Salem <laughs> witch trials, and she's never encountered anyone else. With the stupid spell that whose greatest fear wasn't just their own personal death. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, apparently they're the only ones utterly unconcerned with their mortality. Yeah. They're too dumb to live. <laughs> they're just, uh, you know, if she had showed up at any other episode this season, they'd be like, nah, we're fine with having separate plots and not yeah. staying together, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. It's so stupid they w wash past that the idiocy of that spell too afterwards just <laughs> not to be outdone in the dumb olympics yeah. harry's like <laughs> the only solution here is to put me in their dreams mm -hmm. yeah the person you just threatened with a knife you're, i'll kill you unless you wake them up okay put me asleep too <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's cool we're all over the place <laughs> i don't trust you at all but please put me to sleep don't kill me <laughs> wink wink <laughs> He, he is all over the place. He is very bipolar in this yeah. episode. <laughs> so she she sends them sends him uh, into their dreams, a real um, being uh, John Malkovich scenario. <laughs> <laughs> um, goes to Mel's nightmare where she's in the asylum. Uh, and Harry is uh, strapped into a chair and there's some torture tools and some uh, orderlies coming to fuck him up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he keeps screaming at Mel to wake up. Um, I don't know if she psychically yeah. will hear this. And uh, she I'm not does. Really sure what he expected. She wakes up within the dream. That is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mel gets out of her cell and uh, finds Jordan there. Um, at first, I... so we should know that something's off because those two don't interact. Yeah. <laughs> at first, I thought I was like, "Is this just because they didn't get the the actor who plays her girlfriend?" In this episode, because <laughs> it was like, why is Jordan talking to her? This was, I think, my favorite part of the episode. Just, 
so he, Jordan leads her outside, mm -hmm. and the girls, the other two, are uh, uh, tied to stakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Jordan comes out dressed in old timey outfit, and he's become Mortimer Muffins. <laughs> He was better as Mortimer Muffins than he is as Jordan. Yeah. Like, he played a pretty good evil old-timey douchebag, I think. Mm -hmm. You know what? Maybe that was his audition? Like, they were that's what they saw in this guy <laughs> when they auditioned him? <laughs> I will kill you, witches! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a sad state of affairs, though. And this guy's, like, a regular. And, like, we're off-put just by him conversing with Mel. Because, like... <laughs> Conversing with any other yeah, character. Because he and Mel should have something with each other. And same with right. him and uh, Macy. Well, his only interaction with Macy of note so far has been him being overly threatening at her. <laughs> yeah, being a douchebag. That's why I don't, like... I liked him better as a villain. Yeah. Because, like, he's not convinced me he's a good guy ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what, what up with his girlfriend? Still leaving that plot thread hanging? Yeah, the best things they've done with Jordan since is probably just him like, Oh man, uh, my writing in the first part of the season sure was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did like when they were making fun of the first aid kit thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, what a fucking weirdo. <laughs> so they, uh, they try to get rid of him, um, but Mel's powers aren't working. Uh, but luckily a man's here to save them. <laughs> Harry comes in, <laughs> somehow escaped on his own, never saw that happen. He's got one of the electric prods, though, and, like, zaps Mortimer Muffins in the ass or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Macy's the important one. Any of the rest of you can die, but not Macy, because that's how it worked out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like anyone but Macy. It could have, it didn't even... So it could have been any rando? They could have killed Jordan and it would have woken, woken them up? Like, why did killing Harry, like, fix this? I don't know. <laughs> Was it because he sacrificed himself for, for, for Macy or something? I, I don't know. I would think it would have... It should have had to have been Mel, because this was her dream. And No, but if she dies, then that's... No, well, Mel. No, okay, because Mel already yeah, died. Yeah, Mel before, already right? died, and the way she said the, the stupid spell worked is if they died within their own dream, they wake up. I think it would have been better if they had saved themselves without powers mm -hmm. and come to this conclusion and, um, you know, some other reason why they want to reconstitute the power of three. Not because they're like, oh, we're helpless without it because we're a bunch of dum-dums and we need Harry to save us again. Was that the realization? No, it just, well, I mean, eventually they're like, you know, we work together and like, we need to like you know come together as a team or whatever but mm -hmm. i feel like showing them be utterly helpless without powers was like kind of a letdown for their characters even in a fantasy sequence mm -hmm. a lot about this fantasy sequence didn't make a lot of sense <laughs> <laughs> well all right so they realize that uh every anyone but macy has to die anyone so eventually uh it's harry on the chopping block uh jordan kills him they wake up and then they're all, they all have, like, a happy moment, like, sorry about killing each other, lol, 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 lol. <laughs> Celeste is gone, so she just, what, like, left them on the floor and just walked away? <laughs> yeah. She went to go to the <laughs> well, bar. Well, this isn't working out. <laughs> she went to go drink some skinny mugs at the safe space <laughs> bar. Eat some, uh, vegan taquitos. Yeah, with all the underage kids that are in that bar all the time. Yeah. Since it's self-serve. like, wow, this is what people are doing these days? <laughs> the bar seems to be self-serve half the time. <laughs> you know what? Like, I hope that Celeste shows up some more. She's kind of a crotchety old bitch. I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to see her interacting with dumb safe space people now. <laughs> They get a message from uh, Dora's magic map, so they uh, they go there um, and they end up at the building uh, from the beginning, uh, which appears to be a big stuffed animal factory or something. Mm -hmm. They find a dead witch there, so yeah. another one saved. <laughs> uh, remember when they were making that list? I bet it's a bit more skewed towards ones we've lost now. God, the only one they saved in recent memory is Celeste. Yeah, terrible. Nosferatu guys there, they run away, but they say that they can't let fear define them, so let's just do what Celeste wanted and restore the power of three. Yeah. <laughs> let's just do what she said. It's, it's somehow <laughs> restored because of that nonsense dream sequence. What? <laughs> that really taught Whatever. them a lesson about, I don't know. <laughs> 
it, it's very muddled. If they're going to act like this was a violation of their mind and do the no means no and then have it be like, see, if you're saying no means no, mm. this this would mean that this is a rape allegory, yes? Yeah. Non-consensual magic spell yeah. here. But then the... Definitely. Then the lesson at the end is this was for the good mm -hmm. of everyone. Yeah. It was right. Like, I don't know if you should have done no. it that way, my friends. Absolutely not. <laughs> You don't go, oh, I forced this on you without your consent, but it was the right thing, yay! What? Yeah, this ain't it, Chief. <laughs> and it's like their big reveal of the power of three for the first time since they got it back is opening a door. <laughs> well, what do you know? It's not every day you see the stupidest thing you've ever seen. Okay, they they restore the power of three and they got like all these like streams going between them, so now they can bust ghosts. Mm -hmm. Bust and makes him feel good. They bust the door down, and this generic ass action music starts playing as they like walk out the door. Yeah, and you feel like something's about to happen within this scene, but then it just like this music just mellows the shit out immediately after that. And it's like, what? It's like, yeah, nothing <laughs> happens. They walk out a door, and then it stops as they saunter around <laughs> looking for the Nosferatu. <laughs> This was, like, the laziest fight ever. It's just, like, Maggie gets a flash, like, oh, he's gonna be behind us in, like, five seconds, so guys, in five seconds, turn around and blast him! <laughs> yeah, don't cross the streams! Yeah, this was super proton streamy. <laughs> so funny, you made that Ghostbusters joke after I'd already written in the notes a Ghostbusters joke. <laughs> Don't look in the trap, Maggie. I looked in the trap, Mal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as one of them says, I don't remember who. We just powered of th power of three to his ass. <laughs> yeah, it just like, blows him up pretty easily. It's just like that was the big oh no super no. demon thing. <laughs> we came, we saw, we kicked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> The bullshit is still standing. <laughs> hey, does this power of three still work? <laughs> Whoa, it doesn't. <laughs> you gotta try this power of three, guys. <laughs> Here's where things get very confusing. There's a commercial break, and then when they come back, Celeste is just in the bunker, mm. never explained, and Harry's making tea for her and forgiving her? Like, what happened? Yeah, they came back to a different show completely than what was going on earlier in the episode. <laughs> they, they didn't explain anything. That was very confusing. It was about as jarring as um, the beginning of the episode when Macy goes back home and then Harry's there married to Abigail. This was almost the same nonsense. Just them coming back and like, oh yeah, we're cool now. Pound yeah, it, what? Celeste! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is going on? Yeah. Harry, I'm so filled with rage when I see her flames, <laughs> flames on the side of my face! Uh, <laughs> anyway, she's cool, I made her tea! <laughs> Off screen, I was fine now, and she came back, I guess, yeah. I don't know, she was enjoying a kombucha and the <laughs> In the safe space and yeah. came back. After she explained drunk. to me how asinine that stupid spell of hers was, how easily it could get you all killed, I was like, wow, she's the best! <laughs> He's he's trying to explain this to them, and, and uh, Celeste is too, and Macy's still mad about this as if they didn't con reconstitute the power of three because of this. Like, she's like, yeah, she violated our minds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but we just wanted you, you know, face your fear and all that. And then, like, you and know. And she tries to play it cool. like she was. Like, okay. like, oh, I wasn't trying to definitely make you guys reform the power of three. Just face your fears. But yeah, in a it's... stupid ass dream hellscape where you <laughs> might die if it doesn't go exactly the way it should. <laughs> It was like Harry was becoming a white lighter elder wiener boy again, uh -huh. you know, like he's got to suck up to the elders. Maybe that's part of it, his white lighter side. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Or maybe it's just inconsistent writing. I or Celeste did something to him. Dun dun dun. It probably not. She does say, like, she's like, well, we did a lot of shitty things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pressed. Some of them can't be forgiven or forgotten. Whoops. Anyway, tea. Yeah. Cool. Whoopsie doodles. <laughs> 
I did some pretty shitty things, you know, some of them an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't done things like this in their life, you know, like raise the dead and then split them in half yeah. and made them immortal and, and half of a soul forever in torment? Yeah. Whatever. The thing is, I'm not the same person I was earlier in the episode, so... <laughs> I'm an old bitch. <laughs> Next time you guys say you don't want to be in a dream sequence that might kill you if it doesn't go the way I think it should, I will consider not doing it. She sa- she says a line that was really funny <laughs> and had had strong energy of like, who's the real enemy of the animal kingdom? Man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She says... The magical kingdom yeah. <laughs> is facing its greatest threat yet. Humans! <laughs> well, this is a, a point in time where no one is at Disney World. <laughs> we don't want humans in the magical kingdom right now. So, You know what? Yeah. The real world is facing its greatest th- threat right now. Humans! Yeah. Only one, like, they had no idea how uh, fitting that would actually be by the time that aired. Right. Because any other time, right. just be like, why wouldn't there be humans at Disney? <laughs> yep. Celeste is like, well, I'm here to help. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> You're just a guest star. <laughs> She's like, well, if the faction grabs me again, I'll just destroy my watch. It'll make me crumble to dust <laughs> terrifically. It's fine. <laughs> cool. Anyway, bye. The girls are on their porch in their pajamas. <laughs> Mel gives them these, like, uh, rings she found in a cereal box. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, teamwork! <laughs> Let's make some streams together, I guess. <laughs> what are we doing? I stole these from that store I'm an owner of, maybe. I don't know. I think she said she got it from the warehouse that had all the stuffed animals and... Oh, so she just stole them from Beach balls that and... Was. Yeah. Uh, whatever, so, they, they So they're like a, a carnival prize. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were supposed to be shitty yeah. rings. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the end of the episode. Phelan, what did you think? Uh, sort of strong opening and then falls apart. Once, I don't know, when the dream... The dreams could have been something, but I just feel like they also fall apart partway through, too. Did you say fartway through? (laughs) Fartway through. Um, (laughs) It really comes to a a fart to a finish in these dreams. (laughs) I-, I thought it was really weak, though, and it's just like, after Maggie dies in Macy's dream, she goes, how do I escape this nightmare? And then, <laughs> that's it. She has escaped it. <laughs> it's just like, what? Why was it that I easy? Don't... Yeah. I. It would have been stronger if she was still stuck in this after Maggie was dead, maybe? Yeah. You know, if it worked as intended, they were supposed to fear their mortality and I guess wake up before the last one dies? I don't know why... Now, if they died within their if own of... dream, that was okay, apparently. Yeah, but they didn't... The ones that died, it wasn't their dream. Exactly, that's why it wasn't okay. If Macy died in oh. Macy's dream, she would wake up. Oh, she was supposed to die to say that? Uh-huh. They're... Oh, because their mortality. Right, okay, yeah. I don't know, it was stupid. Yeah, <laughs> and it's insane that's like, if it doesn't happen in that order, then they die. <laughs> the elders are dicks! Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought this episode was better than a lot of what we've been getting in season two. It was still largely inconsistent, but they do have some plot threads uh, that I like, I'm glad the Power of Three is back, and I really hope this means that the sisters stop being separated into very boring plots all the time. Mm-hmm. It it had some some messy stuff, uh, but uh, overall, I think like it was a stronger showing than they've been having. Yeah, like I don't like that. It suddenly, it was cool that she violated them with this dream spell by the end, and Harry's making yeah, her balls. tea. Like that was insane. There's no way that should have been that easy to make a resolution with her. I don't like that the big uber demon sucked in the end and it was easy to just blast him. (laughs) Yeah, the thing with the the lesson in this episode, don't start the metaphor if this is the lesson that you come out with. Like, it's not 
woke if you uh, use a uh, a violation uh, metaphor for this and then have it be okay in the mm-hmm. end. Uh, you don't kind of mixed messages, especially for a show that initially started out trying to uh, shed light on some of these things, mm-hmm. be a little more aware of that. Um, and like a little bit messy there. Wouldn't it have been better like if they didn't use the power three on a door first and <laughs> they do <laughs> break it out on this uber demon hybrid thing. And then like right near the end and all it does is hold them, hold it back and they escape it. Like they don't, they're not able to defeat it with the power three. And they're like, Holy shit. This thing withstood the power of three. This is a serious threat. And like, leave it as like, you know, this big threat out there instead of just easily vanquishing it again. I think they needed a different monster to vanquish. Yeah. Not something with the long plot thread. Because I think like for their first thing that they're tackling after reconstituting it, it needed to be something they destroyed to show that they're back and they're strong now. Uh... Um, But it shouldn't have been if this is something they were setting up all season as like uber monsters for it to be that. Uh, I just I feel like it's just the format of the show where they lean on the power of three to just easily blow something up. It would have been more effective if they had it back, but you know maybe it had a minion or something with it that they kill with it. But I mean, just yeah, maybe I just like it to fail once, like not totally fail. Like it saves them, they get out of there because they use it, but they're like. It you know, withstood it. This is a bigger threat than we've ever faced, kind of thing. Sure, um, but after all season with them not having the power of three dinking around, like I am so fucking done with them not able to use their powers on shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I agree to show them as a threat. That's something to do, but I don't think necessarily for this episode. That's why I think it should have been a different enemy to face. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we'll get something where they withstand it and you know i wish the hybrid thing looked better than their design in this <laughs> well i guess it was nice to see Derek mears good yeah i'm glad he's getting work mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they could have given him some more prosthetics though to make him look like a cooler hybrid demon thing <laughs> yeah we could have had like a scarier looking monster mm-hmm. maybe they'll have lots of different kinds though i don't think they're all gonna look like Derek mirrors with goofy <laughs> eyes and acid spit i think it's just gonna be a lot of like mixed monsters i guess yeah though i mean we i don't know this could have been any fucking thing that had acid breath or spit or whatever <laughs> mixed monsters like the mixed messages in this episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's it for Schwab this week. Uh, looks like there's going to be another episode uh, coming up um, in a week. Uh, sometime soon we'll do that Charmed Rewind when we have some time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, if you liked uh, what you heard here, I'd appreciate it if you uh, subscribed or reviewed on whatever platform that you're enjoying it on. Um, you can find us in audio form at anchor.fm under Charmed Hard with a Vengeance or Charmed Rewind. On YouTube at youtube.com slash movie nights the series. Or Phelan stuff at youtube.com slash Phelus. Uh, you can support the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash movie nights. Or Phelan stuff at patreon.com slash Phelus. Thanks to Peter Hunter for editing this for us. You can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. And what are the hashtags? Mm. <laughs> Mixed monster messages. <laughs> All right. Hashtag what the mel. <laughs> Hashtag don't cross the streams. All right. Well, we'll see you, Charmanders, next week. Bye.